Hi, I'm Junior. And I'm Jimmy. It's a shame that big spaces like this are empty and derelict and nothing's happening with them. So the first phase is we're going to be doing a clear up. So we're going to clear up the site. Next step, paint the walls. Next step, get the beds in. Then offer those um, beds to local residents to come in and use them. Anything you want. You want food, herbs, flowers, whatever you want to grow, more than welcome. It's your bed. Do what you like. When the time period's up, we plan to move the garden to another location nearby. We're the Bannock Community Gardens, which means that we can relocate to any derelict space that has access to direct sunlight. An art space, we've got lots of walls that we can um, invite local street artists. Flying around to the neighbours, speaking to people anyway, anybody that wants to come down, wants to have a space to grow that lives locally, is more than welcome, up to the limit of the beds that we have available. We really want to be able to use places like this to provide spaces that communities can re-establish themselves, local support networks can grow again, and the cult cultural borders and boundaries can sort of be surpassed with everybody interacting again and sharing a space for a communal habit. And so this place in particular has been derelict for like over 20 years, and um, Neighbours, residents, they're scared to come past. What we want to do is make it usable, interactive again, safe and beautiful, so people can not only get that sense of ownership together, but also get that sense of ownership of a space, but also share that together in order to create those aspects of social cohesion that are necessary in, in the city environments. Building the beds for the residents. Hello. Yeah, we're going two, three months, and then I think all the proceedings are left and up. Yeah, when everything comes down. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were saying it'll probably be autumn, winter time. Yeah. Now he's rebuilt the fire place. He's cutting wood. He's redoing Jack's house. Yeah, it gives people a... Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got that release for his energy. Otherwise, yeah. he'd be sitting up on the streets of London getting as bowed yeah. up to be moving on. Yeah. Um, you can, well, I think the, the important thing is that you can... Um, you can take control of your environment a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in the city, uh, you know, you, you don't say where the pavements are, where the buildings are, what they look like and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and you, you don't watch it change, whereas here you can watch it change and be a part of that change. So you automatically are going to start expending your energies in different manners mm -hmm. rather than, you know, being, feeling like you're cooped up. Mm. We're right on the edge of East London, so we've got Liverpool Street right here, Commercial Street there, so we've got the Crisis main office here, and this is the Crisis Community Garden. So on the other side, this is where East London starts and the city finishes. Um, you can't I'm going to harvest some of these. They're gigantic, aren't they? Mm. We're going to have them for our tea. This place is amazing. <laughs> it's the Atlee Centre, so it's a, um, a centre for children, mainly children with learning disabilities and whatnot. Um, there's a really good team here, Tanya and the guys do amazing work in the local area. For me, the garden is about um, giving people an opportunity to make their connection with nature and the land and food been homeless at any stage at any point that's ever had to sign up to crisis has an opportunity to do gardening 
just next door to where the centre is where a lot of people go for day activities and whatnot. So it's a great place to get out to. Obviously, you know, I love gardening and I love being outdoors, growing food and these things, but it does provide great benefits for people for therapy and things like this, for social, um, to be more social. And what Amory does, which is quite different and interesting from a lot of the other community garden projects, uh, or so your community garden or this type of garden project, is that she uh, gets the produce from the garden and cooks it well, largely produce mainly from the garden and cooks it and has an alfresco dinner weather permitting for all the guys which is also really nice and the guys get to not only grow the food not only prepare the soil plant the seeds grow the food propagate plants see the plants growing to harvest but they also get to eat the plants as well which i think is really important so what was it four years ago um, me and my partner who i'm doing this one love project with jimmy um, we were on our way up to a farm called Walnut Farm in Norfolk to meet a friend of ours called Lee who runs this permaculture, who's setting up a permaculture project out there, sort of like a sort of hippie retreat, yoga sessions, meditations, sweat lodge, this type of a thing. So we were going there in the early stages to kind of, well Jimmy was going up there in the early stages to help set it up, so I was going up there for the first time. So we ended up in uh, King's Cross, but because the train we were about to get cost like 40 something pan and then a train an hour and a half later cost like 20 pounds so we opted for the 20 pound train and thought well we'll walk down to the welcome gallery down the road chill out there and then come back for the train after so we did that on the way back um jimmy wanted to have a little chill out around the back of a church opposite euston station um with the big sisters specifically wanted to go there just really like the monuments or whatever and um, so we went there Around the back of it, um, as we often do, we ended up in conversation with people and one of the people that we spoke to was a gardener called Audrey, um, who we spoke to and she seemed to be struggling quite a bit. We asked her like, what sort of help she was getting and she worked by herself and she did say that there was a job on that she had to do that she needed people to come down for. So um, we offered to help her out to get the people, save her having to run around and look for people, give her more time. She was a bit stressed out doing all the gardening work she's doing. So just did that, swap details or whatever. And then I got her a few fellas to come down to come and help her out. Got them a bit of work, got her work without any hassle. So it was pretty much a win-win. And then funnily enough, one of the fellas let us down on the last day. So I stepped in so not to let down Audrey and ended up having a relationship from there with... Um, um, yeah, with Audrey and she took me on full time and sort of took me on as, a, as an apprentice and I used to go to work with her. My first gardening job was at Quaker's Meeting House and the church next door where I happened to meet her as well. I really learned a lot about gardening first hand working with her so I have to give her a lot of credit for the opening up of my gardening career so that was my initial introduction. We've removed so many tons of litter as we've been living here and you know, cleaning up this forest. And down there was, just, was this beautiful pure water coming out and falling over all of this old horrible stuff like you know faded tin cans that were twisted and, and, and bits of broken bottles and pipe and all that kind of stuff. We've now cleaned up that side of the hill and stuck in a few kind of well placed slates. The water's like whooshing off. I mean you can see there the, the ferocity of how much water is coming out. Luckily we are channeling it, otherwise I think, I think pretty much the whole swamped out. The whole forest will be swamped. Yeah, you're right. When these trees, when the root balls get saturated and they're on a hill already and they list really, really heavily, you know, and there's a lot of weight in the air to be constantly sort of over and it's on the hill, then the roots, you know, the, the soil loosens with the saturation. And then the tap roots, which are the three basically big anchors that the that, that, that trees have, if one snaps and the other one snaps, and then the next thing you've got is a you know a multi-ton tree coming down. And one actually did hit the summer house when I rebuilt it. And then another one, this one here that you can see in front, that happened, you can see the, the saturation of the soil. That came over and hit the summer house about a year later but the summer house took it. <laughs> and I only had to do some minor repairs, yeah. which was great. The first time it just judo chopped the house in half and it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> starting from the scratch. So we'll go and see the two houses up here. Good money around here. Uh, he wanted it that way and, and then the main feature of it was kind of being built around a fallen tree. 
it was flowing down there. I decided to leave London um, because I didn't want to to be a part of the system. I didn't want to um, do anything that I felt was kind of giving my energy towards something I felt I felt was inevitably and and inherently exploit exploitative. I got to find out about Runny Mead Eco Village, and it was actually Junior who told me about it. My nan's up a hundred, and she's out in the farm every single day, like always farming, always gardening, like a lot of it by herself. And like she says that if she ever stops, that's going to be it for us. So she's never going to stop as far as she's concerned. I used to volunteer for a, a brilliant group called Commun Growing Communities, and they're mainly based in Hackney and they're actually a really successful community growing enterprise um, and they've got a very good ethos <laughs> and they basically started off growing food in brownfield sites but they kept on being developed so more and more of that's going to happen if any brownfield sites are going to be under extreme pressure for development. They ended up using sites that were... Don't water us Patrick! They ended up being in sites that were uh, inside parks and things like that that were more protected because after having developed sites and then having them completely destroyed, you know, um, it's a bit disheartening because gardens do take some time to establish something. Marigolds, edible flowers. Uh, I think actually this is St John's Wharf which is very good for depression. The diggers uh, believe that all land was God-given and therefore no man can lord it over life or land. Uh, so it's against the privatisation of land and the Enclosures Acts um, and the basically subsequent divi dividing up of what is essentially no one's but has become uh, property and, 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 and something that people want to possess. Broccoli. Yeah. As a tribute to the original writings of Gerald and Stanley, I mean, he had a, a, a sort of Christian uh, overtone to his work, you know, i.e. it being God-given specifically by God. Um, they believed that the, the political issue behind it was still relevant today, if not more so, uh, as our disconnection from the land has, has grown and become greater. They decided to set up camp here, which um, which is a, a kind of an ideal location to, to, to sort of reinvigorate his ideas because it's privately owned land, but it's not being used by the owners um, and therefore should be used for the common good. And that common good, as Gerald Wynn Stanley said, is to grow food and survive. scaffold boards by tomorrow and then we'll be looking to make as many raised beds as we can get in during this week um, and again that's kind of like half building them as examples waiting for the community to see how much they want to engage or if they want to come in and, and build them with us. Julia and I met on, a, on the 1st of January. Uh, I don't think it was a messy night the night before, which is meant to be. We got to really engage in um, some of the ideas that we had in a way that was shared and, and in a way that was progressive. And we've managed to kind of co-visualise this thing that now exists. What, just over a year and a half, we had set up our first organisation, which was really cementing some of the ideas, how to get these ideas across in an effective way, in a model that could be useful and also could have growth leading to actual solutions rather than just a continued conversation. And just whoever wants to come down or, or if they can and we'll see how it goes. I love Jimmy Lodz, my brother. I got together with the guys Jay and Jimmy from the One Love Community group because they had they had such great ideas and I felt that what the guys want to, want to do with this area is, is incredible and it's well needed. And so that's why I really jumped in at the opportunity to get involved because it is a positive project.
gonna let them paint it up one more time. Okay. And then we're gonna offer it up to other artists who wish to do it as well. We could come in and say, look, we want to paint, and you're like, yeah, go on. Like a lot of people wouldn't do that. Where we'll give you that platform because they want to know if you're good and they want to know what you can bring. But how's anyone meant to get good if no one gives you a chance? You know what I mean? That's what Sand, soil, cement, mm -hmm. and then yeah, and then you go. And it's very easy, simple design, and the idea is then you can still get a forklift underneath, mm -hmm. picks it up, it's on a flatbed truck, and away Ooh. the garden goes. It will be a portion of the garden that we, that Junior and I will manage, uh, and grow food for local businesses, possibly, wow. uh, to raise income um, for the site, but also as a place to workshop innovative growing okay. ideas, uh, new forms of urban agriculture, and to workshop with uh, you know, groups who are in need. It's taking off the ends, the metal ends of these uh, scaffold boards, getting them ready to be cut using the two patterns of cuts that we have here to make the vegetable beds. The ends get reused around the corners of the beds to reinforce the fixings. Um, some of the interesting projects I like as well are the ones that are around um, homeless hostels and things like this. So um, there's one just opposite here in, um, on Wentworth Street, just off Commercial Street there. It's called Providence Row. There's a, there's a place called the Dello Centre. They've got a really beautiful roof garden that they're creating. There's a forecourt that's really beautiful where they do um, gardening with some of the residents and people that come in for their day centre. But on the roof, they've also got a, a solar panel and they're and now developing in the process of developing. Been working alongside them a bit to work to create a, a roof garden, an active roof garden. There's going to be loads of veg growing up there, mushrooms, fruit trees, kiwi trees. There's going to be beehives. As I said, there's a huge solar panel. So they're covering a lot of bases um, on that roof garden. It's a really special project. But then there's also other ones. There's Hope Town Hostel just down the road where WEN, the Women's Environmental Network, have, um, as part of the Gardens for Life program, have set up different community gardens. And that's a garden in a hostel where the residents can then grow their food. Previously before that, um, at the Salvation Army Hostel, again just down the road, this is all within less than a mile radius, um, there's a hostel there that um, initially there was not much there um, and then alongside um, Stepney City Farm and um, a gardener, a resident in the hostel called Gary particularly, and they developed a beautiful roof garden. Um, a be really beautiful roof garden, the residents can grow, eat food, um, I've used it myself, it's very, 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 very lovely. They've recently got extra funding for that to develop that as a project, so that's something that people are always going to be able to go through as they come in and out of some of these difficult situations, which is really beautiful. And again, I mean, just five minutes walk from that is where our site is, and we're located just next to another Providence Row Hostel, and again, quite close to, to um, crisis. So, I mean, linking in with people that are going through difficult times and them having a space, an outdoor space, a beautiful space to go to, that's really some of the main beauty that lies behind community gardens. But then also you've got gardens in the States, like Cranbrook Estate, that's one of the best ones that I know. Um, getting the residents involved right where they live, in and around community centres. Bromley by Bow Centre has another really beautiful one. Organically is a great project, it's a little bit further out, but that's a really great project for people to learn. They do lots of great courses. We've got the city farms around here, Spitalfields, who are doing a lot to help us on the project as well. We're right next door. And um, Hackling City Farm, which is just a little bit further. So we've got many projects and more just in the surrounding area. And so we're really adding to what people are already doing. I mean, as I mentioned when before, they've in the last year or so, they've set up 15 community garden spaces, 15 brand new spaces for people to go to. And working alongside them and setting up these spaces and knowing why it is that they do the work that they do and how they do it and seeing the real benefit it has to the community. This has really added to the drive of really creating this space and doing it in the right way. There's loads of people doing really great work in and around East London and everywhere else, but those are just a few.